Well, I'm joined by John Drake and also uh, this man, Gary Schofield. He's been waiting a while to get his hands on this trophy. Certainly has. I think 21 years, it's, uh, it's long overdue. So tell us what happened then, uh, Gary. Can you remember the, the circumstances? Well, yeah, um, it, w it was mentioned back in 1990 regarding the... Uh, in them days it was called the Adidas Golden Boot and then it just all went quiet but um, I think as, as, uh, as we all know we've all heard that uh, the Aussies themselves, the, uh, the Adidas sponsors weren't necessarily to win it, there wasn't necessarily who was going to win it, I was, I was nominated to win the, uh, the Golden Boot that year, they said no it's not going to happen, they pulled out and um, the rest is history and then when uh, Rugby League World and League at Space took over, uh, the old Open Rugby as it was back in 98, they brought it back. Great idea and a great suggestion to uh, to give the guys who missed out from 1998 and uh, I can't tell you how proud I am, how delighted to uh, to be awarded this magnificent trophy and this award. Obviously 21 years later but I mean we saw you in the room there and it was still an emotional moment for you, particularly when you're not playing anymore, just to be remembered for what you did during the time you played. Very much so and, uh, and I think you look at the players who uh, have won this golden boot and uh, as I say we we wanted being the first one and uh, Ellery being the first uh, English guy there and the names on there were Sterling, Hugh McGann and uh, say the rest and we, we, we break carrying them. It's, it's great to be uh, to be part of this, uh, this squad as I say and uh, I'll tell you what I can't be, uh, I'm not a very emotional person but uh, when I was presented with, uh, by John today and uh, very proud and uh, as I said for all the people who've, who've helped me throughout my career and, and especially um, you know the four coaches who I've mentioned in, uh, in half a bunch of who gave me the first opportunity in, in, in first team football Frank Stanton who just let me express myself in, in there and David Ward and Malcolm Willey for giving me the opportunity to play in number six and express myself there and uh, become the player that I was. What about the, the actual uh, season yourself? What do you remember of it and how well you played at the time? Well yeah, uh, again uh, in 89 it was David Ward who asked me if I wanted to be uh, to be a standoff because I wasn't really getting the service at Leeds as a centre and uh, I snapped his hand off. Uh, it was a good season at Leeds that year for me at, at uh, standoff and then Mal really put me uh, put me a standoff and unfortunately the first game wasn't very good because we got beat by Papua New Guinea. I had to call the flak, it was one of the worst test matches I played in in my 46 time for Great Britain and Mal really just said um, back at the hotel he just pulled no punches and he just said to me Scoey can you play standoff at this level so I just said yeah he just said well listen you're the main man on the pitch and that was music to my ears. He only said it once, he didn't have to repeat it and as I say the rest is history and so forth. For Wardy and for Malcolm for giving me the opportunity to number six, thank you very much because that's where I won it. Obviously you guys, you reflect on what's going on at the moment in the game, but you can't forget the past and there is some great players in the past. Is that something you try and remind people about and encourage and, and your articles reflect that, you know, that the likes of Gary Schofield, there was something special? Absolutely. Um, I mean, we, we have a, a regular feature in the magazine where we look at, you know, past players, uh, talk about their careers, their lives, that sort of thing. Um, and I think I'm, it's, an, it's a quote that's attributed to a lot of people but you should never forget who, who, if you drink from the well don't forget those who dug the well and I think modern day players can look back on uh, the exploits of people like Gary what they've achieved against the Australians take that into the Four Nations this series um, you know I think a lot of England players probably a bit mentally under you know under strength when it comes to facing the Aussies we hear a lot about you know the supermen um, you know the un unbeatable all that kind of stuff Gary and the guys proved, you know, 20 years ago, you can walk on the same field as them, you can take them on, you can beat them. And I think with England going back to Wembley, you know, we'll look back to that test match in 1990 at Wembley. If that's not inspiration, then I don't know what is, really. Gary, do you still stay in touch with the modern players? You know, are you still sort of mingling around, you know, the, the international lads? And, you know, do you pass on any words of advice? <coughs> well, to be honest with you, um, we'd like to be involved, but unfortunately we don't get asked, which... Um, if I'm honest, we have just come back from Australia to see my son over there, and uh, the heritage over there, and uh, the history, they don't, they don't forget it there, and they, they like to, they like to have the ex-international, they like to have the, the ex-players uh, involved in some sort of capacity, and uh, I'd like to see that over here, but it doesn't happen. Um, no, we don't really see a lot of each other because, unfortunately, and maybe just a bit of a criticism here for uh, the RFL and with Nigel Wood and Richard Lewis is that uh, no, we don't get asked to, to come to these games, and we would love to be part of it, and uh, when I do speak to, to the guys, when we do meet up very, very rarely, they want to give something back to it, and uh, I think it's something that the RFL need to look at seriously. You still as passionate about the game as always? Oh, there's no two ways about it, and uh, I think when you look at the side, what... Uh, when I was involved we, we, with the Great Britain setup, and I'll just, I'll just name it with you, with Joe Lydon, Jason Robinson, Martin Afire, Gary Connolly, Paul Newlove, myself, Andy Gregory, Lee Crooks, Martin Dermott, Kevin Ward, Phil Clark, God bless your soul, Mike Gregory and Henry Henley. That experience has gone out of the game. We're not involved. Can't afford to lose it. Bring us back.
Well, obviously they've got the Four Nations coming up. How do you how do you think they will do? I mean, and then the World Cup's not too far on the horizon. Do you think they've got a chance of competing and doing well? The problem is we can't beat them. The problem has been we can't compete, and this is the belief that we need to get not beating them, but first of all competing. We need to get that sort of mentality into the players, but also to not just the players, but people who are going to come and watch us because as we've seen over the last few years, you know, we've been uh, we've been pretty poor. And we've got to be open and honest about it. We've got to hold our hands up and be open and honest about it. And uh, I just feel as though that little bit of experience added, that little bit of guile, then yeah. We can compete, maybe not win, but we can get there and get there and start preparing for the uh, the, the, uh, the 17 World Cup because uh, for the Four Nations, it's going to be pretty tough. Of the current stars, though, who do you enjoy watching? Who do you think is you know the, the type of players that you know gets you going? Well, we know uh, we know with Sam, don't we? You know, and they still got a little bit to learn that experience there. But uh, the more he plays, the better he's going to get. And as we all know, Gareth Phillips has been outstanding in NRL. Sam Burgess from there. But uh, yeah, James Roby comes his, his own a little bit. Luke Burgess has been uh, outstanding for South uh, Sydney this year. So uh, yeah, we've got some indi- individual talent. But at the end of the day. We've got to be there for, for the 18 minutes. We've got to play the old British way. Play with that element of surprise. Play with the little chips over the top. Pass the ball in your own 22, 30 yards out where they don't expect it. Because I can reassure you, the Aussies don't like a bit of biff. The Kiwis don't like a bit of biff. It's like a wave. Stop this wave. Stop, start, stop, start. Don't let them get any momentum. And I'll tell you what, bring back a bit of biff. We'll see how strong the Australians and Kiwis are then. Gary only straight. I'll, I'll let you have your opinion on uh, England's prospects. Well, I, I mean, I always have been, and I remain so an eternal optimist when it comes to England uh, and Great Britain. Um, I don't think I've ever go, gone into a Test match expecting to win, and yet I've seen Great Britain beat Australia, and I've seen them do it on numerous occasions. Never a full series, but it's certainly you know you get you get 17 players, one against one on the field. Anything can happen, but you've got to be mentally prepared. You've got to be you've got to be tough, you've got to, you've got to want to win, you've got to have the pride in the jersey. But like Gary said as well, you've got to be able to do your own thing. Those players, when they get in the England team, they don't need to be told how to pass a ball, how to kick a ball, where to kick it. They know all that. And I, 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 you know, I agree with Gary, they've got to be allowed to express themselves. It'll be more difficult for them because they won't have the same kind of space against the Australians and the Kiwis that they generally tend to get in Super League. But never go into a test match thinking that you're beaten before you start because otherwise what's the point All right, fellas, well thank you very much for talking to us today and congratulations once again on getting your award at last pleasure thanks for